Welcome, everybody, to the Coaching for Business Advantage uh, Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce webinar on the 17th of July. Uh, it's a, a lovely morning out there, and it's great to see uh, see you all, all here uh, this uh, this morning. We, we welcome uh, Inspired Partners uh, today for the webinar, uh, a business I, I know well. Uh, Sally and, and Andy um, will be talking to you in a, in a moment um, and really discussing our uh, discussing their areas around business coaching um, and some of the uh, advice and, and work that they've done during lockdown and over many years through change management in, in marketing, PR, advertising, HR, learning and development and consultancy for, for many, uh, many years. So we have Sally Palethorpe, who's our in, uh, the managing partner of Inspired uh, Partners, soon to be 16 years old as a business and a, a two decade long background in coaching and change management based in Sutton Coalfield. Um, and also Andy Richmond bolt um, again, uh, Sally is a business partner uh, with Sally from the beginning and, and again has that that long-standing uh, experience of coaching and, and change management. Um, just on on my side before we, we move into the um, into the areas you'll see the the sort of webinar and the introduction there that we have so there will be a QA and a during the course of um, the morning uh, following uh, Andy and Sally's uh, presentation. Um, you'll see the chat box in at the bottom right hand corner so as the chat box uh, works you'll see there's uh, ability to put questions so we would very much sort of uh, encourage you to uh, to get those questions asked and get those discussed uh, as grace has just put in there in the box that's great um, following the the presentation we'll then um we'll then go through the q a during the sort of presentation as well i know uh, sally and andy have got some questions and some polls to for you to get engaged with so again if you can um uh, sort of vote or, or say on the chat and that will certainly help the um the presentations uh, go go well and, and, and really increase that engagement which is which is really what a lot of these things are are about um so we've gone through all that for me uh just wanted to quickly go through a bit of information around the chamber you'll be aware of the chamber as you're on our, our webinar but again our mantra is connect support grow uh now more than ever we've seen a huge amount of um engagement with, with businesses some some about good things some about not so good things and, and really all we always say is is engage with us as a chamber through your relationship manager through these channels through our social media and and really uh, feedback to us and let us know what's going on in, in your world so we can uh, we can represent you um through that obviously there's other ways as well to to push your business forward such as these webinars such as the member networking Zoom calls that we've been doing over the last few weeks, and such as the member to member offers and the PR channels, the daily articles and daily PR and business news, which has been so so helpful for many over the last uh, few months and, and for a lot longer than that as well. So thanks everybody. I'll just finish with uh, our last information about our events. So of course, um, we've got our, uh, our annual awards celebration, which will be online next uh, Wednesday. Um, and again a huge opportunity for us to, to really sort of talk positively about business in the area in these tough times you'll see there's various other events uh, coming up across the group and then finally on the friday the 28th of august is our future faces awards uh, i'm a future face for another three months before i turn 35 but for the young youngsters amongst you or the young professionals amongst you uh, i really would sort of um promote that as a way to to talk about young professionals in greater birmingham and the deadline for entries for those uh, awards are Friday the 31st of July. Uh, visit the website for any more information. And with that, I shall pass over to our our, uh, our keynote speakers of the day, um, Sally and, and Andy. So Inspired Partners, welcome. And Sally, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction, Chris. Um, yeah, so welcome to Coaching to Ignite Business Performance, or as it was uh, named on the internet, Coaching for Business Advantage. Um, and we just wanted to give you a quick overview about Inspired Partners, and then I'll hand over to Andy, who will talk you through all of the materials on coaching. So who are Inspired Partners? Grace, could you just put the a slide on one for me? Thank you. So um, we're, as we said, although Chris, I thought at one point was going to say that I was 16. Um, the business is 16 in September. We're Change Management Consultancy. And we work with clients, large and small, um, around change projects. Now, that could be changing their processes, changing the ways of working, um, organisational change. So change comes in many different facets. 
but in all cases it's, it's about delivering tangible business results because there's no point doing change if it's not going to be bring advantages to the organization so we do work across a range of sectors so manufacturing the service sectors we've worked with legal organizations um, we work in the defense sector retail and also from large multinationals through to SMEs. So a, a real range of um, companies and a range of sectors. And in all instances, we have to tailor our solutions to um, mirror or match the requirements, but also the budgets. And I think budgetary constraints are, are much more um, prevalent now. So it's about making certain that we can deliver something that will meet the budgets of the companies while still delivering those business results that are so important. And we've been thinking about what our offering is um, in response to COVID. And really, it is around the four things at the bottom. So change and helping organizations maybe transition from where they are to where they need to be to um, survive. Coaching, which Andy is going to talk about in a minute. The ways of working, which is around actually how do we work together? And that's becoming more important when we've now got some people working from home and some people working in the offices and we're using more technology. So being clear about what's what you can and can't do. And then we also support companies with HR services. We've got a couple of in the team who are HR specialists, um, which helps maybe helps um, recruitment, but at the moment is also helping with some of the furlough and some of the other um, repercussions of um, the pandemic. But that's enough about Inspire Partners. You will hear my voice occasionally because I'm just going to um, help Andy on some of the uh, interactive sessions. But for now, I'm going to hand over to Andy to give an introduction and start the session. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, uh, Sally and Chris, and welcome to everybody on this sunny Friday morning. Um, I'm really excited about talking to you about something I'm very passionate about, which is coaching. Um, and my one goal today really is to try and inspire you to think about how you can use this as a style going forward and think more about how you bring coaching into your business to gain business advantage. Um, you can see on the slide a little bit about me. Um, very briefly, my, my story of how I got into coaching is 20 years ago when I became a consultant, I decided the one thing I was never going to go near was coaching. I didn't understand it, worked in large organizations where they had coaches. They all seemed to be doing different things. Um, doesn't mean that people didn't get great results from that because I think they did but I just couldn't understand what it, this magic was that coaches were bringing in, um, into organizations that, that people were reacting so positively towards. However, once I uh, became a consultant I got phone calls from people asking if they could book some time in and I would ask them that's fine what do you want to spend time talking about and they would tell me. Um, very often I knew little about what they wanted to talk about and had to confess to this but they said no it's fine just want someone to talk to um, and this kept happening and I thought mm, this is really interesting all I do is sit and listen to people and ask a few what I think are probably sort of silly questions but um, they kept calling uh, I kept talking to people and I thought do you know what maybe this is what coaching might be so from that took me on a journey uh, over 20 years to, to really understand what it is so I've sort of taken my journey from trying to understand coaching from the inside out as opposed to training courses um, to learn from other people. So business in back, um, business psychology, um, but as you can see, there's my sort of experience there on, on the screen. So um, before we kick off, one of the things I think I hear from people, training coaches of all levels, and people that receive coaching is confidence is often one of their key blockers, and also can be an enabler. So there's a poll I would like to kick us off with, with just getting you to think about right now, how confident are you having effective conversations, coaching conversations with people? So if you'd just like to take a minute, please, to answer the poll.
Okay. Do we do we have some results? Okay. Do we want to give that a minute grace just for everybody else to get a chance to contribute? So, what's the conclusion of the poll then? So, it appears we've got some very experienced people with us on the webinar that are um, either partially confident, fairly confident, or totally confident. So, excellent. Um, so, for you, I think this would be a good opportunity to just refresh on your thinking around coaching um, and perhaps take away a couple of ideas. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so in terms of what we're gonna, gonna cover over the next, probably the next 15, 20 minutes, is thinking about how coaching um, can affect your performance, your team performance, and imp importantly, I guess, your employee engagement. Um, I guess in summary, does it really make a difference? And if it does make a difference, how does it make a difference? And what do you need to focus on as a coach, particularly in these challenging times? So a bit of time for you to reflect um, and think about your own personal coaching style. Okay, question for you. So think about when you've received coaching, what do you think made coaching good for you? So if you wouldn't mind just popping a few answers on the chat, please. Just what do you think's made, made it good for you? So I'm really thinking about when you've received coaching from other people now. Thank you, Chris. So something there about sort of help you to organise your day. Um, Mike, not being told what to do by the coach, allowing me to find my own way. Um, Gemma, being held account to account. I think that's a very important point you've made there. Mohammed, come up with new ideas, current trends. Being held to account. The ability for others to look at my problems from a different perspective. Okay. Um, and I think they listen to me. That's that's one there that Sally's popped in. I think um, often I hear from people when they feel they've had a good com coaching conversation. So conversely, for you, when you felt you've had a conversation with somebody and it hasn't been good for you, why is that? Why, why is that? What's made that a bad coaching conversation for you? So again, if you can just pop some thoughts in chat when it hasn't gone as well as you would like it to, why is that, do you think? Thanks, Mike. They jumped to their solutions. They've been judgmental. No understanding. Jumping into what to do. Thank you, Gemma, Mohammed, Chris, Mike. Yeah. Okay. Well, no surprise to me because, um, and no surprise to you, this is what I hear all of the time that makes a difference. And for me, in summary, just get this next slide up, is when it goes well, it's pretty much always the fact that they focused on you and your agenda. When it hasn't gone so well, when it's been perceived as a bad coaching session, is they focus on themselves and their agenda. Um, and that's exactly what, what you've told me you've experienced as well today, so no difference there. So the thing I think that this message that gives me and other people is that when we have good coaching conversations, there's a lot of it is about the mindset of the coach. And 
when we are non-judgmental as a coach but curious we tend to have the best experiences or people have the best experiences with us it's when we dial up our judgment as you've identified and don't be curious about the other person that they don't go so well so what i'd like to do is i'd like to share with you um, a study that i i think starts to give you a little bit of the why this is important so we'll just go to the next slide Okay, Stanford Business School. There's a five year study there. I'll let you read it. So, this is a study that's taken a large group over a long period of time, um, looking at the performance that, and the impact that managers have on the employees. And notice what happens when a good manager was swapped for a manager that perceived not to be so good. And the study really showed that performance increased considerably immediately when you put a good manager in place of a bad manager, which wouldn't surprise you, I guess. However, the thing that the conclusion they came to is the key differentiator between these great managers and the poor managers was the fact that these great managers had a coaching style and did a lot of coaching with their teams. So they were very curious, they were less judgmental, and they did the things that you told me a good conversation looked like. Okay, so in summary, and this next slide comes up, is when you receive good coaching or when you give good coaching it leads to discretionary efforts so people are prepared to give you more so no surprise that performance goes up if performance goes up obviously organizations like yours do much much better so what i just want to look at very quickly is why does this happen what benefits are people perceiving because of these types of conversations so when you have these conversations with people and they become more productive why do they become more productive so if you wouldn't mind, please, just in the chat box, what do you think are some of the key benefits that people perceive from their coaching conversations with people like you? Again, please just, just put your thoughts in, coach, in, sorry, on, in the chat box. Increase in confidence engagement, Chris. Gemma, self-reflection, Mohammed, a new horizons, motivation, new strategies. Excellent. Mike, safe space to test that new thoughts. Definitely motivation. Thank you, Angie. Andrew, make, makes them realize that there is always an alternative way. Mike can share stuff they can't share with colleagues. Okay. Ab absolutely. 100% and, and I guess through those things you can see how people potentially will increase their performance. So what I want to share with you now is through research what some of the top five things are and let's just connect them back to how that links into leadership, behaviour and coaching. So we'll go to the next slide. So here's his top five benefits of people that receive quality coaching. So greater self-awareness. So if you think about this, why would this not lead to increased performance? Because if we have greater self-awareness, it means that we have options in life. We have, to, we have the opportunity to consider our choices, the impact they're making, and actually make better decisions. Smarter, more focused goals. We know that people who are clear about what they want to achieve tend to be more motivated and achieve their goals quicker. Less stress is a big one. Um, because when we're less stressed, we can use our strengths um, in a way where they're not suppressed. And we, we tend to think clearer and, and work more effectively. Greater self-confidence often comes from the fact that, as you've identified, people are coming up with their own ideas. Therefore, as they're trusted um, and they put them into practice, that they gain confidence in what they do. I um, mean, hence, communication skills tend to come from because we communicate better with them, we listen more and we ask better questions, that tends to rub off on other people. So these tend to be the top five things that come out of a great coaching conversation that help people to, be, people to become more productive. Okay. 
Let's just move on to the next slide. So in my experience, these are the three things that are most important with being a great coach. And for people to receive the, the best leadership style and to increase their productivity and impact on business results. So mindset we've already spoken about. We've talked about not being judgmental and being more curious. Um, I think there are some core skills that a great coach has. The good news is everybody has these. It's just a case of tuning them in to, to work to the most effective way for you. And I guess what, what coaching really is, which is the structure of the conversation. So I just want to, one for the rest of this session, I just want to address the second two. So we'll go to the next slide. Okay. So coaching um, isn't a skill. It's a structure of a conversation. The skills that you put into that are the things that bring it alive. We'll talk about that in a second. So this is a coaching structure that I like to use. I'll run through very quickly, um, and then we'll see how it works. So first bit is in a conversation, um, the first stage is, is to ask, ask, the, ask somebody very quickly um, what it is that they would like to talk about. So in a nutshell, so in a nutshell, what's the purpose of the conversation? This will give you an indication of whether the person is focused to the future and something they want to achieve, an opportunity, or perhaps they're in the now and they're considering a particular challenge um, they have at the moment. So the next thing is to, to ask them, okay, so what do they want to achieve in this situation? So that gets them thinking about where they would be that they're not now. Um, following this is probably the most important stage, which is what's going on right now for them. So consider where they are, what they may have tried up until now, um, and, and where they are they're not yet. You, that gives you two, two positions. You've got the future and you've got the current position. The next step is to investigate choices. So this is about helping them to think through what could they do about this situation? Uh, what haven't they done about it? What wouldn't they do about it? Um, and really getting them to think about choices available uh, to think through best options. Most important thing then is on the back of this that they take some kind of action. Um, and as coaches, as you know, it's really important to follow up and evaluate. And in some ways, one of the most important steps is to follow through. So this is just a, a little framework. You may be familiar with other coaching structures such as Grow or Variance of Grow or Oscar. Personally, this is the one that, that I like to use. So. Sully, have we got time for a quick exercise? Okay, Sally's giving me the thumbs up. So what, if you have a pen and paper, it would be preferable to write down some thoughts on this. If you haven't, just think it through in your head. But what I'd like you to do right now is just think through a small situation, a small problem, a small opportunity you have right now. It could be on the level of something that you haven't fixed yet that you never seem to get round to a relationship that isn't as good as you would like it to be but i would just like it to be something that is a small opportunity or a small problem for you i'm now going to ask you some questions uh so round about 12 questions and all i would like you to do please if you can is just write the answers down to these questions so the first question is in a nutshell one sentence describe the situation so what's the opportunity or the problem as you see it right now just going to give you a few seconds to do that. I am then going to rattle through these questions quite quickly. You don't have to share your answers with me, they're just for you. Uh, and there's going to be around about 12 questions I want to rattle through. Next question In this situation, what is it that you would like to achieve? What are you trying to achieve in this situation? What would you like to achieve? So, if you could write the answer down for that, please. Next question, when specifically would you like to have this achieved by? So not sometime this year, be very, very specific. Friday afternoon, four o'clock is fine. Sometime next week is not. Next question, how will you know that you've achieved or resolved this? What is gonna tell you? Next question, 
Why is this important to you? You can write that down, please. Next question. Who else is involved? Now, if you are writing those down, just draw a line under that, please, and we'll move on to the next question. Okay, write down three things that you have done about this up till now. If you haven't got three things, write down anything you can that you've done towards this, but a maximum of three things, please, that you've done to either resolve or achieve this. Next question. By what you have done or not done so far, what has that taught you? What have you learned about yourself or the problem or the opportunity by what you've either done or haven't done so far? You can just write that down, please. Next question. Being brutally honest, what's really stopping you? Once you've answered that, draw a line under that question, please. Next question. What do you think are probably the three key things that you could do about this right now? So if you were gonna take action on this, what could you do? So not what anything you have to do, but what's possible, what's the art of possible? And just write three things down about what is possible to do about this place. Next question. What will happen if you choose to do nothing about this? So if you choose to do nothing about this situation, what's going to happen? You can just write that down. Next question. What is going to happen if you choose to do nothing about this? So what is going to happen if you choose to do nothing about this? Next question. What is the most outrageous thing you could do to resolve or achieve this right now? No consequences. Do whatever you want to do. Draw a line under those answers, please. Next question. What will be your very next step in achieving or resolving this. So what's the very next thing you're gonna do about this? Next question, when will you do this? So even if it's nothing, what are you, when are you gonna do this? Next question, who else needs to know? And then the final question, what are you going to put in place to make sure that you absolutely carry this next step out? No shoulds, only musts. What's gonna make this happen, this next step? And then draw a line under that. Okay. So by now, you'll have realized well, all I've done is taking you through that Ignite process in a very light way um, we've had, having any interaction at all with you just to help you to think about when you ask people questions within a structure, how that helps their thinking. So I would really appreciate it if maybe you just put a few comments in the chat box about how you experienced that personally. So it doesn't matter if you've got a result or you haven't got a result, just pop in the chat box how you experience that very, very short exercise. Thank you, Chris. So it's helped focus your mind. I think somebody said coaching can help people do that earlier. 
Any other thoughts from anybody? It leads you forward so you can see what your next steps are. Yeah, and for some people, it's about saying, actually, why am I thinking about this? I can actually decide to do nothing. And I think honest assessment of myself is, is, is a big one, Andrew. Often people um, have to just look in the mirror sometimes or face up to an honest question. Good focused action oriented questions. Amazing mind blowing technique. Thank you, Mohammed. And again, you can see that just asking questions through a structure really helps to shift people's thinking sometimes. Even it's to decide to do nothing, there's still a consequence, and that, that's what we're looking to achieve here. Okay, so thank you for that. So if you move on to the next slide. The final final thing really is, oh, sorry, that was the uh, last exercise did. Apologies. Is really thinking about this, this, um, this final step, which is what is it that great coaches do? And again, as we talk through this, you can think about perhaps what you're really great at. Um, I want to pick a two or three of that. Building rapport quickly, my experience, great coaches are really good at building relationships with people quickly. Why? Because what happens is when you've got rapport, people are more honest, they open up quicker, and you can get to what's really going on. Smart outcomes, I think that's about being clear about what you want to achieve. With clarity, then be, the rest of it falls out of that. Um, for me, I think if you do one thing better today, go away and really, really listen to people without judgment. Don't wait to talk, just listen. Um, the reason observation's in there is because you'll all know that most of the communication from people comes from their body language. So when we ask great questions, we often see a reaction from people. Now that sort of links with the, um, the skill there of giving in the moment feedback. So when we see these changes in people's body language, we can actually ask them, what is that about? That often leads to an insight. Now, one of the things that I see coaches that are very powerful coaches is they don't just ask questions, they ask challenging and insightful questions. So they're prepared to challenge people's belief systems, their models of the world, and not let them off the hook when they think, oh, that feels a little bit uncomfortable to ask a question about that because often they're the things that are most important. And I think finally that bit about really bringing out must-do actions in people. So in my experience, seven core skills. We've talked about there's a structure you can put all that into, which then makes it even more powerful. But one of the most important things is your mindset as a coach, which is not to judge and become very curious. Okay. So... I think from, uh, in summary, from my perspective, you know, there are good and bad coaching conversations out there. I think the reality is when we have a good coaching conversation, it will lead to discretionary effort. I think the bit, I think definitely, definitely leads to discretionary effort with people. Um, individuals have different benefits, but there are some key reasons why people want to give discretionary effort to great leaders that use coaching. Three things I think to bear in mind, most important mindset, develop your core skills. And if you can develop conversations within some kind of a coaching structure, my favorite being Ignite, you will see the real power of your coaching come out. Um, coaching does make a difference, it makes a difference for all the reasons we've said. Um, individuals that give discretionary effort definitely will benefit your business. So I'd like to leave you with those thoughts and just really, I guess, the challenge for you of, what could you do differently today if you chose to? Who could you listen to a little bit more than you're listening to right now and see what happens? Okay, so over to you, Sally. Oh, Sally, I think you're muted. Okay, I think <laughs> shall I jump in? Apologies, I think things have been muted, <laughs> and it's not on purpose, Sally. It's nothing personal. Um, we we just wanted to say, look, you know, we're, we're always open to conversations with people, and we we believe it's really important to sort of give before you get back. Um, so we're offering just a three conversation to anybody 
that would just like to talk to us about how coaching could help you. So totally no obligation. But if something's clicked with you today, you want to investigate coaching more. We, we train coaches at all levels. We coach people at all levels. If you would just like to have a chat about that or even something that is sparked within you, just a conversation, then if you contact Sally on the details you receive afterwards, we're more than happy to pick up that conversation with you. Okay. Chris, I think, is that you now? Thank you. Uh I'm muted now as well. No, thank you, thank you, Andy. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, we're just going to try and get uh, get Sally un, un, unmuted, um, but we can start with the with the Q and A uh, from now. So if there are uh, questions um, questions coming through, by all means, uh, by all means, uh, put them up into the chat, and Grace can put them onto the screen. I suppose. Firstly, thank you, uh, Andy. That was really, really quite funnily enough, quite inspiring. Called inspired inspired partners. I think, um, yeah, the sort of the calm way that you took through those questions was really quite um yeah it was really really good and, and that structure is is great and it's certainly uh i've got a couple of, couple of things that have been on my mind that are that i've been that i've put through that process now and that seems certainly seemed to work so i hope everyone else on the call did a similar a similar thing um so really starting on the questions I, I wanted to pick up a few a few areas uh firstly myself obviously the structure and the structural side of coaching and of you know approaching those questions and those answers that that you need has perhaps been disrupted um, little, has perhaps been disrupted a little bit by by covid19 and not being in an office you know yeah. working from home that's structured different I I that, back. Yeah, just your thoughts on on that side and how it's how that that lack of structure perhaps might affect people's abilities to sort of you know directly uh yeah directly approach those 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 issues they have yeah, and not stew on them. It's a great, great question, Chris. Um, funny enough, I had two conversations with people yesterday where we're looking at adapting how we do some of the training to help them with with how the world's changed, really. Mm. So more of this type of conversation, more of conversations over the telephone. The great news is that the techniques work exactly the same way. Yeah. And the key difference is, if you think about the three ways we communicate, which is the words we say, our tone of voice and our body language is we have to work harder on listening for the um, for the tone of voice so that we yeah. can really pick up on how people are saying things and ask more insightful questions because we're losing some of the body language stuff yeah 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 and i think that's a, a question that has been picked up there that i've just gone off my screen yeah from mike mike allen yeah any tips for listening better rather than as you say merely waiting yeah. for your turn to speak yeah that um, is that is a tr tricky thing to do isn't it in yeah I, situation, I, think, I think the key thing is a mindset uh, and it's about get out your get out your own head so mm -hmm. so don't think or judge people practice quietly in your mind down and just listen to what they say uh, and i know that's a lot easier said than done by the way and it's one of the things <laughs> as coaches we have to practice quite hard and the other thing is we start listening for different things. So we often talk to people about um, at an advanced level of coaching is we're not really listening for content. We're more listening for people's belief systems. Yeah. We're listening for things they don't say. We're listening for things that some of you will be aware of called deletions, distortions, generalizations. But it's really how people construct their version of the world. The interesting thing is if we're in our own thinking, it's very difficult for us to hear that so mm -hmm. top top tip is quieten your mind down and just practice listening without having to feel like you have to respond in any way and yeah. the other thing i'm i'm back now good heavens yeah, sally, back. welcome back sally <laughs> thank you <laughs> the other thing that i would add is that sometimes we feel we need to fill the space so if you're listening um you don't need to respond straight away so if you do as andy said quieten your quieten your mind down but then you can think about your response so you don't have to instantly go back in to respond. And I think that's really important as well. Mm. You're absolutely right, Sally. And that's exactly what will happen when you do that is you don't feel the need to jump in. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's really good advice. Thank you. And I've a couple more questions coming in, which is great. So thanks yep. to uh, Gemma Carter-Morris. How are you, Gemma? Yes. Um, what is your approach when individuals are not engaging with coaching? Yeah, this is a question I get asked um, all the time. Uh, on our programs. Uh, the reality of it is that, you know, you can't coach them if it doesn't want to be coached because because you need them to engage. Yeah. However, I'll, I'll tell you a little story. I, I remember being asked to coach somebody on an occasion and I 
said, are they aware that they're going to receive some coaching? The line manager said, well, not really, but I really think it will help them. I said, well, look, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll be prepared to sit and talk to them about how coaching may help them. And then if they buy into it, we, we can do something together. So yeah. I sat and spoke to this person and we had a chat about what coaching is, how it could help them. And at the end of about half an hour conversation, they turned around and said, Andy, thanks for your time, but I really don't think this coaching is for me. I said, absolutely fine. That's the reason for the conversation. Um, however, just before you go, what are you going to do then if not coaching? So tell me what you're going to do. What's going to happen if nothing changes? It was really interesting because we had a fantastic 15-minute conversation on the back mm. of that. Consequence was at the end of it, they said, mm, do you know what? I think I might give this coaching a go. <laughs> so for me, it's always helped people say, do you know what? Are you aware of the consequences of not changing your behavior or not doing something about this? And that's that for me is always the question I go to. What's yeah. the consequence if nothing changes? Okay. No, really if good answer. Coaching, that's what else? Right. Yeah, no, that's a good good answer. Thank you. No, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. And then another one from um uh, from Andrew uh, Warnerkin. Any tips for those who can't pick up on the nonverbal cues slash communication? I suppose, yeah, that was quickly going back to one of the other the other questions earlier. Yeah. So any any tips on that side from Andrew? Okay, okay. So so the the tone the tonality stuff over the is that what we were talking about there is the tips. Um yeah. well I think this is <laughs> The, the meaning of what people are saying to you is displayed in the body language and the way they say it. Yeah. So my top tip is, first of all, as, as, as we've already said, Sally and myself, is it just may be purely listen and start to think about what are you really hearing. Mm -hmm. Stop the judgments. Don't feel like you've got to respond. Don't feel you've got to find an answer for somebody. And maybe think about asking them some slightly different questions. So asking them a question like, um, what's the most challenging thing I could ask you right now? What am I might be missing what you're really trying to tell me? So I think if you're struggling a little bit with picking up on some of the nuances at the moment, is maybe ask a few questions that might get people to share that with you. What are you not telling me right now that would really help me to help you? Yeah. yeah. And I suppose, yeah, you mentioned it's, it's asking those questions that you may not necessarily want to hear the answers for Absolutely. or your mind thinks, I don't, I'm not sure I want to hear this, but it's so important, isn't it, to, yeah, yeah. to have, as you say, to listen to those, those answers. Yeah, that's really important. Yeah. Don't let people off the hook. So when you hear something, you think, oh, that could be a bit uncomfortable to ask something about that because they may show some body language or tonality that might show some emotion. In my experience, that's exactly where you need to ask the question. Mm. Yeah, and that in itself could be a could be a, a webinar for a whole new day, couldn't Absolutely. it? About asking difficult questions. That's perhaps <laughs> yeah. a follow up for a for another time. No, thank you, uh, thank you, thank uh, you. <laughs> Absolutely, no, thank you, Andy. Appreciate that. If there are any other questions from the from the group, by all means, uh, send them over into the um, into the chat, or obviously follow up with Andy and with Sally on uh, in due course. Uh, I suppose we're, we're nearly at the end of the, the webinar. If I could just ask Andy for a, a, a sort of a minute wrap up. Uh, and or in fact, we'll have Sally first and then Andy to finish. So um, just, yeah, just, just your last tips from what we've discussed, what you've sort of present presented and, uh, and then, then, yeah, and then we'll, uh, we'll finish for the, for the morning. Okay, thank you. So uh, my main thing is we, the whole point of this was about coaching for business advantage. And it, it, this is about saying, how can we make certain that our business or our organization is successful moving forward? Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes people think that coaching is is sort of a soft a soft thing to do, um, but actually, if you get the if you get the right coaching relationship, and you get the right outcomes for the individual, then you get the right outcomes for the business. Yeah. So that would be my summary. And I was going to say, and Andy did say, is that yeah, if you'd like to talk to us, then please do feel free to do that. Wonderful. Okay, thank you, Sally and Andy. Yeah, I think I think that sums up well. But Andy, just your yeah, yeah, just your final thought as well. Well, all I can say is, you know, I was definitely a reluctant coach. So I thought I had all the answers. I thought I could help people. And I used to get really frustrated when they didn't do what I thought they should do. What, what I have learned is that this is can be one of the most powerful techniques, if you do it well, with anybody. 
And if you look at the most successful organizations and look at the behaviors of leaders that are thriving in those organizations, I think you'll definitely see some coaching in those styles. Brilliant. Brilliant. No, good, good, good point. Thank you, Andy. No, I appreciate it. Welcome. Andy, Sally, thanks so much for your time. It's uh, really, uh, yeah, really, really engaging, uh, engaging 40, 45 minutes or so. Um, again, appreciate your uh, your, uh, your dulcet tones, Andy, getting us all to think <laughs> about some of the issues that we're, we're facing. Um, obviously, yeah, with regards to, to further information, this will all be sent out onto YouTube from uh, early part of next week. So uh, you'll be able to watch, uh, watch yourselves back. And, and those who were on the call can, uh, can obviously uh, watch it and those who weren't as well. Um, that's all from us. So a really, really big thank you again from Andy and, and, and to Sally. Uh, it's thank great you, that you were able to showcase joining us. some of their advice. Thank you. And um, and have a wonderful uh, a wonderful rest of the uh, rest of Friday and the weekend. And we'll, I'm sure, speak to you again next week. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Bye, everyone.